I'm Barry Goldsmith, the Warning Coronation Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Brownsville, Texas, serving the Rio Grande Valley and all of Deep South Texas. Today we're going to talk about the upcoming 2011 hurricane season and how to be prepared and not be scared. We'll first talk about the meaning of the seasonal forecast. The number of storms that is included in the forecast for the entire North Atlantic Basin may be large, it may not be large. But remember, that basin covers about one quarter of the globe, of which the valley is just a very, very small part. The only thing that forecasting more storms one year versus fewer storms another year tells us is that there are higher or lower odds for landfall. But the odds are still very small from any one region. That would include the Rio Grande Valley and the city of McAllen. So pay attention to the forecast when storms actually form. And no matter what the forecast that you hear this time of year in May, even in June, it only takes one landfall in the valley and deep south Texas, making it to, Brown, to McAllen, to make your season a memorable one. On this slide, we're showing why we want to look at more than just the hurricane category. Many people just think about that category one to five in terms of degrees of badness. But a hurricane includes these four elements, not just wind, which is what the category is based on, but also storm surge flooding for our coastal brethren. We include inland flooding, which is a big factor here in McAllen and of course tornadoes which can be embedded within the circulation and cause problems. So category again only means expected wind speed. It says nothing about those other three, cat those other three parameters of storm surge, inland flooding, and tornadoes. Wind speeds will decay significantly as storms move inland, especially for higher category storms with higher wind speeds. So the category may mean little for impacts in McAllen directly as winds decay, but flooding is the number one concern. And a tropical storm such as Allison in 2001, which dropped over 30 inches of rain and caused billions of dollars in damage in Houston, can do great harm here in McAllen. On this slide, we're showing the example of return periods in years for Category 3 hurricanes. In the lower left part of the picture, you'll see the number 46 in a green circle. That means that every 46 years, on average, a Category 3 makes landfall along the deep south Texas coast, somewhere near the mouth of the Rio Grande. So we don't see this kind of thing very often with the category alone. Again, we're not just talking about the winds today, we're talking about everything else. <clears throat> the winds will tend to decay. Here's an example of a Category 3 120 miles per hour wind, making landfall and moving at 14 miles per hour. Even moving at a pretty good speed, we see quite a bit of wind decay, yet we still have a Category 1 hurricane with 74 to 95 mile per hour winds reaching as far west as McAllen. But this is a rare case indeed, yet we need to be prepared for the possibility that it could happen. But more importantly, we need to be prepared for flooding of any sort. And this picture here shows what happened last summer when Hurricane Alex made its move. As you can see on the picture, the little red circles with the hurricane symbols show where Alex went. And Alex went pretty far south of McAllen, shown in yellow with the dot there where it says McAllen. Yet after Alex made landfall and weakened significantly to a low pressure system, all that energy and rainfall fell heavily for days across the Sierra Madre Oriental in northern Mexico. And with all that rainfall, we ended up getting some flooding. This picture shows an estimate of how much rain actually fell in the mountainous regions of northern Mexico. We've estimated at least 50 inches fell over a seven day period. That rain had to go somewhere, and that somewhere is downhill into the Rio Grande Basin. And sure enough, within a week or two, that rain made its way into the dam systems. Those dams had to be opened up to release the water. And when the water was released, the river went from a meandering, maybe 30 to 50 feet wide channel of water to a one to two mile long expanse of water that ultimately flooded communities in Star and Hidalgo County. This picture shows the flooding in Los Ebenos, which is a few miles southwest of here in McAllen. This next picture shows the flooding in Rio Grande City. Notice how the city was just spared. 
And part of that sparing was done by a planned release of the dams, just enough water to flood the river, but not enough water to cause flooding to a large community such as Rio Grande City. However, the water became very uh, much after so many weeks of releases that the floodway system, which begins at the Anzaldúas Dam and flows through uh, places like Far near Westlico and Mercedes, and then along its way to Sebastian on out to the Gulf, those floodways became used to channel water further and keep the big water from flowing over levees and into communities such as McAllen. In this picture, we're looking at flooding along the floodway covering uh, Farm to Market Road 1015 near Progresso. This road happens to not include a high water bridge. The bridge is down low and the water flowed over it as high as six to eight feet in some places for more than a month between early mid-July to about mid-August. This picture shows the North Floodway, which is a branch of the floodway system that many of you may have traveled on your uh, trips across the valley from McAllen to Harlingen. This is Federal Highway or Expressway 83 um, with the bridge that goes between uh, near Mercedes where the outlet malls are. The floodway in that case was filled up with six to eight feet of water, low enough to stay below the bridges, but high enough to cause some concern. So let's move over to preparedness. How will we prepare this year like any year for a hurricane? You want to be prepared for your family, your home, and probably very important here, the aftermath of the storm. The rule of the game is always run from the water and hide from the wind. So learn your home's elevation and where your zone is for evacuation. If you typically get a lot of flooding when the rains and the thunderstorms during the spring and summer are fairly heavy, you might need to consider evacuation from a tropical cyclone, meaning a tropical storm or hurricane that's producing tens of inches of rain. Get flood insurance now if you're in any prone area to this type of flooding. It's a peace of mind insurance. You may not be most prone, but it won't cost you all that much about the cost in many cases of a soft drink per day for the whole year. Retrofit or harden your home from wind and water. If you live in a colonia or mobile home, a older home that may not be retrofitted for newer code, think about adding more wood trusses to your roof. Think about protecting the windows with plywood or shutters. Those kind of things will probably allow you to stay if you're not in the flood zone because you'll be able to survive and hide from that wind. You need to have a family plan. And this family plan requires being put into place if an evacuation is ordered. So if you must evacuate, know who will house you and now. Now as in May or June or July, any time of year. Will they be your friends? Will they be other family members outside the area of concern? Maybe it's San Antonio, maybe it is Dallas, maybe it's in Oklahoma. Is it a safe zone? Is it away from any threats from this hurricane? Can you stay a while? Will the family or friends allow you to stay for one, two, or three weeks while damage may need to be cleaned up down here in the valley? What about pets? Are there uh, family members that live in these areas that are allergic to the pets that you may have and will have to evacuate? Again, close relatives and best friends will be your best bet when you have to evacuate for a storm. Finally, the aftermath. You want to practice safety first. Believe it or not, in the state of Florida in 2004 and 2005, more people died after the storm was gone than before or during the storm's arrival. Do not return to damaged areas until allowed or uh, set by local officials. Learn how to use your generator if you own one. Always run it outside and consider wiring it to your breaker box, which protects you and the people working on the lines that will try to bring your full power back as soon as possible. And unless you're skilled, never try to clear away debris from down power lines or rooftops. Many of the fatalities mentioned in Florida happened when people were trying to do that back in 2004 and 2005. We have a lot of information to provide you on various websites that serve the Rio Grande Valley. McAllen.net is your one source that will, will provide emergency information for the city of McAllen that will relate also to weather forecast information that we provide at the National Weather Service. Our, our website is weather.gov forward slash RGV. That's short for Rio Grande Valley, easy to remember, 
Everything you need to know is there. There's a number of sites here uh, linked off of our website that will provide the tropical weather day in, day out for the whole year. We have our hurricane guide, the 2011 updated edition in English and on Espanol. We also have the National Hurricane Center, which is simply www.hurricanes.gov. And the following sites after that are floodsmart.gov and flash.org. FloodSmart will tell you everything you need to know about the National Flood Insurance Program and how to get covered. And flash.org will tell you everything you need to know to retrofit and harden your home. We hope you've enjoyed this preview of the 2011 season, how to stay safe, and remember, don't be scared, be prepared.